Right, I think we are live. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me, or good morning, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, let me know, as usual, if you can hear me and see me okay. I think everything is working fine. And today we're going to be doing a solo playthrough of Viscounts of the West Kingdom, the third game in the West Kingdom trilogy series, uh, designed by Shem Phillips and SJ McDonald. I have done a multiplayer playthrough of this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, start of January. But it has a solo mode, so I'm going to be playing through the solo mode today. Echoes, apparently. Ooh, now, why is that? Why is there echoes? Anybody else hearing echoes? Uh, there shouldn't be any echoes. Uh, let me just check my microphone settings. Uh, microphone. Okay, it was Peter. <laughs> He's watching me twice. That's how you get the views up. If everybody opens... Um, 10 windows and watches me 10 times, that'll get the views up. There you go. <laughs> right, okay, we're all good. We're all good to go. So, there's a few people in the chat who already know how to play the game uh, and have played it solo, so I will be looking to the chat for, for help. Let us know, Peter, what you did. <laughs> but whatever you did, it's been done before. Um, and this isn't going to be more uh, much of a tutorial. This is going to be more of a playthrough. Uh, the previous video that I mentioned, the multiplayer one, that is more of a tutorial. Today we're just going to be doing a playthrough. So, we have it all set up. It is here. Uh, we are using, as recommended by my Patreon supporters on Slack this morning, the Builder AI. So, the way that this game works is it's one to four players, and the player boards, which are these, uh, are two-sided. So, this is the normal player side. If you're using the AI for the other player, you use one of the other sides, and they're all slightly different. Uh, and I've heard that the difficulty settings, I don't think this is in the rulebook, I don't think it says which ones are hard and which ones are easy, but apparently the builder is the one that I should be using. So if we just have a look at, I've got this camera set up, is it the right one? Yes. So this is the AI's board, and you can see in the top left that this is the builder. So th this is going to focus on building. And I hope you've picked this is the easier one. <laughs> if you've picked the really, really hard one, uh, then yeah, we're not, we're not going to do very well. Um, right, so the objective of the solo game is to score more points than my opponent. Points are added up at the end of the game. The board is set up uh, as normal for a two-player game. Uh, however, we only have two sets of cards here. Normally, the pairs of cards that you create in setup... Uh, I don't have a camera angle for that one. No, I don't have a camera angle for that one. I can move this one around. There you go. Um, so normally you have a number of pairs of cards equal to one more than the number of players in the game. And although this is set up for a two-player game, in a solo game we only have two cards. So we need to have a look at these and decide which one we're going to choose. We choose a pair, so we can either start the game with Rudolph in our starting deck, who has a, when it drops off ability, of getting rid of two cards or taking two resources. If I take that one, I get this one. This is basically my starting stuff. Or I can take... Uh, Teresa, who, when she drops off, does this, but actually look at all this. This is corruption. Um, which one do you want me to take? Left or right? I will happily accept um, the chat telling me which one. Yeah, I mean, this one starts with more resources, but starts the game with two corruption. So, Oliver's here as well. Hi, Oliver. James is here. Doing his regulation daily work. Uh, time for a beer. Yes, <laughs> time for a beer. Two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, yeah, I didn't get out and do any exercise this morning because I was setting, uh, setting up my streaming software for Skype because um, I'm going to be needing that for tonight. So we have uh, left, 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 Rudolph, which is left, left. Uh, Joseph's here, board games in Niramas, thank you for joining in. Left, 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 right. Okay, so two people have said, no, three people have said right, but the majority of people have gone for left. So we're going to go with the left one, we're going to go for Rudolph. So what happens is normally the, the other player would get these cards, but in the solo game, all we need is that. We need the number 10 on there. That decides where the other player starts, which is here. Uh, and the rest of these cards just get completely ignored. We do not need them at all. My cards, however, Rudolph gets shuffled into the deck. Again, correct me if I'm wrong on this. Um, and then this card tells me... What's all that on the other side? Oh, that's the reference card, yeah. Uh, this on the other side tells me what I get. So I've got another camera angle set. Oh no, it's the same camera angle. I just moved the thing around, didn't I? So there we go. This is my player board here. Uh, so we're going to start with 
We're on space six. We start, I'm going to go facing clockwise. We start with two gold. I'm going to put my resources up here. We start with seven coins. Now I've got the metal money. Thank you very much to Shem for sending me the metal money. Four, five, six, seven. Uh, one deed card, which is going to go that way up, and a debt card, which is going to go that way up. We're going to try and flip them over later on. And I start the game with two workers. Now, where do these workers go? I think they just go here, don't they? Oh, no, is that two workers in the castle? Uh, I'm going to be a bit rusty on the rules because I've not played it solo. Place the indicated number of workers for free on any first tier section of the castle. Yes. Ooh, that one's got a bit chopped out. Right, okay. So where are these going to go? Do we have a camera angle set up for this? We do. Okay, so I don't know where we want to start. So I think I'm going to start here. Okay, yeah, we'll start there. Because this is the one that allows me to flip cards over. Right, I think that is it for the setup. So that's our player reference card. I'll just keep that off camera. Um, first ring of the castle. Yes. Get them below the card, card flip on tier two. Yep, did that. There we go. Uh, you need the other starting card to see where the AI starts. Yes, done that. Starts there. Right, we are all good to go. So I've already set up this board. Uh, these are randomly placed around the edge and I've got all of this stuff sorted. So I think we're good to go. I shuffle my deck now, don't I? And then I draw three cards. I think that's right. I will shuffle the cards while I'm looking, but I think that's right. Uh, we've got a player board. Randomly decide the start player marker, which is me. It's always you in the solo game. Uh, player cards, have done that. Face down draw pile, each draw a start of hand of three cards. Yes, okay, so. Uh, Matt is here saying good morning and Ralph is here saying good evening. Whereabouts are you, Ralph? I know, Matt, where you are. Uh, Ralph, whereabouts are you? If you're saying good evening, you must be to the other side of the world. Went all northern there. Graham's here as well. Right, okay, so three starting cards and then the rest of them go there. Okay, so my starting cards are... Oh, you're in Singapore. Cool. Right. We've drawn lots of ones with trade icons on. So there we go. That is my starting hand of cards. If I put them, put them sort of here, oh, I can move that up a bit and put my, my cards in my hand here. Okay, there you go. Cards in my hand are here. And we are ready to go. So we play over a series of rounds, and the first thing you do in each round is this, which is if a card was there, it would drop off and trigger its drop-off ability, and then I play a new card. Which one do I want to play? This has an immediate ability. The financier has an immediate financer has an immediate ability. Um, but the lender is also good. Now I'm looking at the trade icons as well and I'm looking at where I am because this number up here tells you how far you want to move and how far you move will indicate which space you land on. And I don't have an overall plan going in. People are saying lender or journeyman. Jonathan's here as well. Hi Jonathan, thank you for joining in. Let's look at the overview, there we go. So yeah, lender or journeyman, I'm thinking lender. Although the journeyman allows me to hire for free when he drops off the end. So that could be quite good as well. Um, yeah, I don't really have a plan of what I want to do at this stage in the game. So I'm going to play the lender. That goes there. Uh, if it had any corruption on, I would... Um, sorry, if it had any criminal icons, I would now get corrupted, which I don't. And now we move. So I move one. Uh, and you can pay to move it further if you want to, but I, I'm not going to at the moment. I'm just going to, I'm just going to move the one. And then if I wanted to, I could pay three to discard this card. If I do, I'm going to get a corruption, but it means I can add the criminal icon to the amount of trading that I want to do this turn. And I, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to trade. Two trade is one gold, and I have one, two, three, four trade. Uh, I can buy extra trade if I want to, but no, I think we're good. I'll just take the two gold. So we got four gold, which is which is all right. 
Yeah. Oh, and thank you, George. Yes. Please remember to click like on the video. Um, yeah. Hopefully the quality is okay. Yeah. Must just be James's connection. Right. Oh, and Brandon's here. Hi, Brandon. Thank you for joining in. Right. So that's that. That's that. Uh, we traded. We got some gold. Then I can hire the card if I want to. Now, if I hire the card, it's going to go into my discard pile. Um, I will gain a corruption. Do I want to? No, I don't think I do. I don't want to hire the card. Okay. Then we check to see if there's been a clash of or a connection of my, um, what's it called? Virtue and corruption, which there isn't. And then we draw back up to hand size. So hand size is three at the start of the game. I've drawn Rudolph, my special character. Right, so that's quite good. And then the AI. So what the AI does is you basically draw the card and you put it on here. Let's have a look at the AI's board here. So we've drawn a card from this deck. Now this deck is made up of the brown cards, which is the current scheme cards. The future scheme cards are up here. Uh, and it's told us which ones to take out at the start of the game. So two of the future schemes have been taken out. So you always use the same cards, no matter which AI you're playing against, but this tells you which, which of those cards to take out of the game. So, yeah. And then you reveal the top card. This was shuffled. That goes there. And then we basically follow these four steps in order. So the top one is nothing. Next one gains a virtue. Next one moves three and moves three. Uh, can't move less. Always moves three. And always goes around the outside. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, the AI player never goes on the inside. Always just goes around the outside. Okay. So there's been a there's been a meeting, which means I can rearrange my cards if I want to. Um, don't think you get corruption when putting it in the discard. Uh, I thought you did. Yeah. I thought the icon in the top right meant whenever you either uh, discard it to gain its ability or recruit it, you get the corruption. I think that's right. I think that is right. Um, so we've moved the three, and then if we look down at the bottom here, it tells us what it's going to do. So it's going to do that, or that, or that. So in order, it's trying to do this first. So this is uh, placing nobles in the castle. And I know what you're thinking. I know you're thinking, well, wait a minute. You have to be on the inside track to place nobles in the castle. The AI, the AI doesn't. The AI can still do the two different actions that you would normally do on the inside, but can do them from the outside. But we need to work out if it can or not, because it needs three Fleur de Lis symbols to place two workers. And it has two, and it doesn't have any gold. So it can't actually do that. So we go to the next one. So the next one is build. Okay. Uh, now it builds from left to right, I believe. Um, and how many build icons has it got? It's got one. When considering buildings, it always places their leftmost building that they can afford. Did it not get any resources? Did, did I? Does it have any resources? I might, yes, it does have resources. Maybe, maybe I've done this wrong. Hang on a minute. Maybe it should have started with some resources. Um, yeah, give the AI all of their starting items as listed on the left side of their player board. Right, apologies, I forgot that. It should have started with some stuff. It should have started with three stone, a gold, um, one of these deed cards. Okay, I'm going to put the workers off camera. You don't need to see them. And a deck card. Okay, it should have started with those. I forgot that. Right, now let's go back. You're probably shouting at me. Yes. <laughs> Starting resources. Thank you. Um, in which case, let's just go back because it now can do this. It can place nobles in the castle because it's got two symbols and it spends the gold. Just move this screen down a bit so that you can actually see the resources. Okay. I'm just going just gonna to zoom this out a bit. Bear with us a minute. This is how easy it is to do with this new software. And a bit more. There you go. That's better. You can now see everything. So yeah, it can now do the first thing that it was going to do, which is to place two nobles in the castle. It costs three. It had two and it spends the gold to boost it. I think that's right. 
Oh, the deed and debt should be taken before you set up the decks. Absolutely right. I got that wrong in the multiplayer playthrough as well. So uh, we need the extra deed and debt cards, which I have put safe. So, yeah, you're right. I need to put two more on there. And two more on there. Thank you. There we go. Right, we're all good. Um... So anyway, we're doing that. We're placing uh, we're placing two workers, and it places them in the first tier of the main board segment where their viscount currently stands. So basically, they go there. Okay, and that's it. That is what the AI does. Yeah. Okay. I think I got that right. So yeah, it does spend gold. Right. Next, my go. So everything shuffles to the right. And then I play a card. Okay, so what do we want to play now? Do we want to play some more trading and get some get even more stuff? I think I do. I think I do. I think I'm going to be greedy and just get loads more stuff. So I'm going to play the journeyman. Journeyman goes there. Um, I then move. I move two. Oh, I could have rearranged. Oh, no, I, I didn't have anything to rearrange. Could I have moved this to the end when I rearrange? I don't think you can, can you? Yeah, why did you not rearrange? Yeah, that, I, rearranging only happened once in the in the multiplayer game, so I can't actually remember exactly how it works. So I'm just going to check rearranging. Here we go. <clears throat> May immediately rearrange the townsfolk cards on their player board. Players are reminded of this on their player cards. So in other, so I could have moved this right to the end if I'd have wanted to, and then it would have dropped off straight away. I don't think, no, I don't think I want to do that because I want to maximize the use of all of these trade icons. Okay, so I could have rearranged, but I'm not going to. So I've played the journeyman. I'm going to move two. One, two. I can pay to move it more. I could move it to, I could pay one to move it to here and get three ink wells. <clears throat> or I could stay where I am and get six money. Well, um... Hmm. No empty spaces. Not sure what that comment's about. So, yeah. Um, ink wells are useful for the castle thing. So let, let's do that. Let's, let's pay a money to move it one extra. And I'm going to use my six trade icons to gain three ink wells. Now, I could, if I wanted to, spend silver to get more ink wells. No, no, no. Ink wells is for the manuscripts. Yeah. I think I still might do it. Yeah, I think I'll still do it. I'll, use, I'll, I'll get three inkwells. There you go. Inkwells for the manuscripts, gold for the nobles. There you go. I've got three inkwells. Oh, I need to zoom out. There you go. Um, <clears throat> so yes, I use my six trade icons. Six trade icons from here to here to get three ink wells and that's that done my things didn't meet i draw a new card i have drawn the squire aha right okay so over to the ai uh what we do is we shuffle this card along and then we draw a new one so this time uh my opponent is going to flip over a card and i think it tells you here this is the bit I didn't quite understand. When given the choice of which card to flip, the AI will first attempt to flip that which they have flipped the least of. If they are tied, they will flip a debt. Okay, so they flip a debt card over. Now, normally when you flip a debt card, you get a resource. So I assume the same thing happens here. And whenever the AI gets a resource, this is quite cool. You look on here and they want stone until they have six. And after that, they take gold until they have four. And after that, they take ink wells. But basically, my opponent is going to take another stone. So there you go. My opponent now has four stone. And then the next thing is he's going to move two spaces. Uh, did I remove the starting schemes? I did. They are, they, but they were black. It was to remove those two, which are black ones. So uh, one, two. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I wasn't 100% sure about that. 
because there is a brown card that has those icons on, but because this banner at the top was black, I didn't remove them. Um, yeah. If that's wrong, then that's too bad, but I did look at... I did look at this board here, and this has removed that brown one and those two black ones. So I think I got it right. Okay, the last thing, move three, the last thing is try to do the, no, so it's this one, move two. Did I do that right? Where was it? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I moved it to, uh, right, so it's trying to do this. It's trying to do the manuscript action. And the manuscript in this area will cost three uh, crosses. We have one, two, and we don't have an inkwell. So it can't do that. So instead it tries to do that, which is build. So at this point, it's going to require that seven hammers. Wants to place their leftmost building from their player board, available building spot. Right, so if it's going to cost seven, they've got one hammer, two hammers, and four stones. So I don't think it can build. Is that right? Are you enjoying doing these streams? Yes, am I having fun? Yes. Thank you very much to all of my patron supporters for making these possible. Um, but yeah, I think that's right. I don't think it can build. I think its first building costs seven, and it's got two hammers. Uh, and it's got that. Now, what about discarding the character? No, it doesn't. It will only discard the character if that is on here. So um, it picks it picks one from the group if it can. It builds the next building along, does it? It always wants to place their leftmost building brackets. Oh, that they can afford. Right, okay. So it's not the seven one. It's this one, which is five. So it can place this one, which costs five. One hammer, two hammer, and three stone. Okay, it's the, that they can afford, shouldn't be in brackets. <laughs> uh, it's their leftmost building that they can afford. Yeah, it shouldn't be in brackets, in my opinion. Uh, right, so this is going on, and if you look at this clockwise, it goes on the leftmost space, which is that one, and it gets a gold. So, it gets a gold. There you go. Uh, I think that's it. The AI gains the effects from building spots and links just like human players cannot cross the river. Okay, so we're good. So it didn't do that, so it did that instead. Right, that is it. It grabs the fives or the threes. Yes, okay. Right, next. My go. Everything shuffles to the right. And then, let's have a look at what we're going to play. Which is my, that's my camera. We are going to play. So we've got quite a bit of money. We've got some gold. We could now go into here and start putting some squires in the castle. We could totally do that. So I think maybe that's what we'll do. It's a very sandboxy game, this, isn't it? I'm not saying that as a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. You can, you've got so many different strategies and so many different things going on that you can do. Then again, we've got these trading icons. Maybe I should, maybe I should stick with the trading. <laughs> I could totally stick with the trading, couldn't I? And just really maximise this training, uh, trading. Yeah, so three would actually be one. Oh, we could go one, two, three. We could get to here. That would allow me to do a building. I might do that. I might do that. Thin your deck when you can. Yeah, but the discarding of cards only puts them in your discard pile. There's no... Destroy... Oh no, destroy a card. Ah, yeah, that's destroy a card. I was thinking that was just discard a card. It's not, is it? It's destroy a card. Oh, that's even better. So maybe we'll put Rudolph down. Yeah. Okay, I think that's what we're going to do. Right, we're going to put Rudolph down and we're going to move the two spaces. And we're going to go one, two, we're going to end up here. Um, and 
yeah, I'm going to do the I'm going to do the um, the placing the nobles action. So I've got one that will allow me to place one. If I spend two gold, I can place two. If I spend four gold, I can place three. I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend four gold. One, two, three, four to give me five fleur de lis points. Um, and I could use this character if I wanted to. No, you can only use the character if the icon matches, which it doesn't. Okay, so I'm, I'm placing three, three nobles in the castle right here. Now at that point, I've got five. So when there's five, one goes up, one goes to the right, and one goes to the left. I think that's right. And because one's gone up, I can flip this over, and I get a resource, and I'm going to take... I don't, I don't know. What, what am I going to focus on? Have I got a strategy? I don't have a strategy. So I'm just going to take... Um, I'm going to take another gold. Let's try and do lots of nobles in the castle. Uh, all it's when it's three. Only when it drops off the board. Yes, yeah. When this drops off the board, that's when I get the resources. Yes. Okay. I think we're all good. Yeah, because at the end of movement, if anything has more than three in it, they get bumped off. But I think I've done that right. The chat's very busy, which is good. But I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see from the chat if I've done anything wrong. But I don't think I have. We're all good. Right, so I moved. I did that. I've put some nobles in the castle. Uh, I moved up. I flipped a card over. And it is to draw a card. Jonathan's saying he would have only placed one meeple to save the gold. Yeah, but that's what the gold is for, isn't it? <laughs> I think that's what the gold is for. Right, I've drawn my thief. Okay, so over to my opponents. I'll shuffle along. Uh, and then this goes on to here. Right, so criminal icon, which means my opponent gains corruption for every criminal icon on their board, which is just one. Then this, which is to draw a card from their future draw scheme pile, which is this one. Uh, and where does this go? On top of the discard pile. Okay, so that's a future scheme. Uh, then we move one space on the board. Now clip it clock to here. And then tries to do their favoured action. Okay, so their favoured action again is build. Um, it's got, that's on the discard pile. It's got one build point and it's got one stone. So it can't build anything. So instead, it does this, which is uh, plus red and flip over a black. Yeah, gain a deed card. It gains a deed card. It's got two deed cards. Uh, and that way up. And flip an unpaid debt to paid. Now, it can't flip an unpaid debt because it doesn't have one. So I guess it just doesn't do anything there. Or would it flip a different card instead? No, I don't think it does. Again, let me know in the chat if I've got that right. Oh, criminal icons are wild. Ah, yes. You're absolutely right. So it builds. It does build. Okay, so forget that. Thank you very much. Criminal icons are wild. So it's got one hammer, one criminal icon, and a stone. There you go. It can build. And it builds this one. Uh, and this one goes here, which allows it to flip a card over, which is that one. Right, okay, there you go. Thank you to the chat. It can build the three building. Yes, we're done. My go. Uh, this slides off, and the drop off effect is I can flip a card over. So I'm going to flip over my uh, deed, and then everything slides along. And then I'm going to play a new card. Right, what am I going to play? I think I'm going to play the squire. And we're going to go for more nobles in the castle. Yeah. Yeah, let's go for that. So the squire goes on the board. I have to move two spaces. But I can pay to move more. Yeah, you can always pay silver to move more, can't you? I think. Sure you can. Yeah, pay silver to move more. So I could, if I wanted to, go one, two, three and go there. Yeah, that's what... Oh, no. 
Because if I do that, that'll go there, that'll go there. I can get, flip another card. I don't have another card. But that's a bit of a waste. I'm just going to stick to the two. I'm just going to move two and I'm going to stick on the inside. Okay, I'm going to have to stand these up because they don't quite fit lying down. Is that okay? I normally like to lie things down for the overhead camera, but they don't quite fit on the board. Um, so yeah, we're going to go there and we're going to use the two fleur de lis symbols plus the gold for three noble points, which is two of these in the castle. Which goes here. Okay, now I could have paid one extra to go here, put those two on here, and then bumped off one of the red ones. But no, that's fine. That's fine. We'll populate that bit of the castle there. Um, done that, done that, done that. Draw a card. This is quite smooth, this. This is going quite well. Right. Okay, so over to my opponent. That card goes off into the discard pile. These slide down. We get a new card. First thing he's going to do is going to hire a character. Okay, now, let's just have a check as to which one they hire. We'll dismiss the town, is it dismiss? Yes, dismiss the townsfolk currently adjacent to their Viscount. The card is removed from the game and they gain the immediate benefit, immediate effect on the top right of the card. So that's this one. And the immediate, immediate benefit of the Friar is one virtue. Unlike when human players dismiss townsfolk, the AI does not gain the icons from these cards to help from their actions. Right, okay. Then we've got two movement, one, two. And then we've got um, the noble action. Now the noble action, they've got one, two, and they've got a gold. So they do it. Yeah, one noble, one criminal, and the gold is three. Three gets them two workers, which go into here. So we are going to have some bumpage. There you go. So neither of us have three in there, so nothing spreads out or moves up, but this gets bumped out. And whenever you get bumped out from level one, you get two money as compensation. Okay, done. Yes, I am liking this. I'm liking it so much, I'm gonna have a drink of milk. There we go, my go. This drops off. I gain the drop off effect, which is to gain one virtue, and I dismiss a character uh, for free. No, I hire a character for free. It's a slightly different icon, isn't it? Oh, the X is means no cost. Right, so I can hire one of these for free. Now I'm tempted to go for the one with the highest uh, value, but that's the swindler, which has got a criminal icon on. And I'm not sure about criminals, but I think I might just take it. Yeah, I'm going to take it. I'm going to hire the swindler. That goes to my discard pile. And I gain this, which is one corruption. So that goes there. That was when the card dropped off. Now all of the other cards slide to the right. And now I get to play a card. Now, because I, yeah, I've hired that. I haven't dismissed it. I hired it. Can I? I can hire from anywhere? Yeah, I think so. Hire any one visible townsfolk from the main board for free. Yes, I've done that. Okay, next, which one of these am I going to play? Uh, good question. Very good question. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the financier. Oh, sorry, the financer. Okay, because the immediate effect of the financer coming into play is I get two coins and I can discard a card to my discard pile. So I'm actually going to discard the thief into here because I don't want it right now. I don't think I want it right now anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to discard that there. Right, now, I'm now moving three spaces. Uh, did I actually want to do that? <clears throat> what action am I going to do this turn? Oh, I was going to do that. I can't do that. Okay, change of plan. Change of plan. I'm going to put the two money back. <clears throat> I'm going to play the... I'm going to play the thief. Okay, so yeah. Change of plan. Corruption, which means I gain a... a sorry, criminal, which means I gain the corruption. 
But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move one space and I'm going to move to here. And I'm going to use the noble action again. And I've got three fleur de lis, which is two people. And I can put them in here, which means I can now kick out one of them. Now, what does that mean? Do they get two silver when I kick them out? I guess they do. He's got no money at all. <clears throat> Let's just check the kicking out of the AI. I don't know if the AI ever gets any money. No, I don't think it does. Yeah, so that's on here. Whenever it would rearrange or whenever it would get money, it actually gets a resource himself instead. So I'm kicking it out, it gets a resource, and it takes stone. Two silver means something else on the guide card. There you go. Yeah, it's a resource instead. And because it's the builder, it's a stone. Right. So I did that, I did that, I did that. I draw back up. And it's now my opponent's turn. So card slides off. These slide down. We'll get a new one. Okay, so nothing there. Gets a resource, which is a stone. Then moves one. Okay, and then tries to build. Now, can it build? Yes, it can. It's got a build icon there, and it's got two stone. It builds another one of these. It builds it there. And that allows it to flip a card. But it doesn't have any cards to flip. So I don't think it does. No. Or is that this? Ah, yes, that's what this is. So whenever it would flip a card and it doesn't have any card to flip, it gains a virtue instead. That's what all of this is here. Okay, so I think we're done. Yeah, virtue instead. Cool. My go. Rudolph disappears off. Now, Rudolph is going off the board. And that means I get to use his drop off ability, which is either destroy two cards or get two resources. So I think I'm going to destroy two cards um, because then that's thinging my deck out of the cards I don't want and putting in the good ones. I think I'm going to get rid of these two. I'm going to get rid of the trader and the abbot. Okay, so they've gone. So that's, that's dropped off. Then we slide these down. Which means I only have one card in hand this turn to play, which isn't ideal, but them's the breaks. I'm going to play the Financier. Uh, when it comes into play, I can discard a card. I don't have a card to play, uh, to discard. So, get two money. And then, get three silver from destroying. Oh, I forgot that. Yes, you get the money when you destroy them. I'd completely forgotten that rule, thank you. One, two, three. There you go. Loads and loads of money now. So I've done that. Which, I, I've then got to move three, but which action do I want to do? <laughs> I don't quite know. I've got two of those. It could be one thing in the, in the castle, but that's not very good, is it? We could trade, but trading's only two things. We could do something with an inkwell. I'm looking at that enforcer. That enforcer's quite... Oh, I can dismiss the enforcer. Ah, yeah, you can, you can dismiss the character where you end up for extra icons. Oh, but I can't dismiss that because I'm going to be moving along. I'm going to be moving three. And I could go one, two, three. Can I get... Is there another one? No, there isn't. Okay. Do we some stone? Definitely could do with some stone. Move one and dismiss. Can't move one, I'm moving three. The AI bonus, it's not instant. Does not gain the virtue right now but when it shuffles the discard pile. That must be something else. Yeah, that there. Yeah. Um, I think we might just get some more ink wells. I mean, I could pay to move more. 
And we could put one thing in the... Oh, hello. I just thought of something. Yes. I just thought of something. This, this might work. Okay. My movement is three. I'm going to pay a silver to move four and go one, two, three, four. Okay. Then I'm going to choose the nobling action. I have one criminal, one fleur de lis. So I've, I've only got one. Oh no, I could pay to move another one, couldn't I? You can pay to go all the way around. So I can actually end up there. Okay, then I'm going to pay three coins to dismiss the enforcer. Okay, please fix the AI stone. What have I missed? <laughs> what have I missed about the AI stone? There's something wrong there. But I'm going to pay to dismiss the enforcer, which gets me a debt, which is bad, but could be good. Dismissing costs three and you take a debt. Yes, so I've paid the three, I've dismissed it, but I've got two of these uh, icons for this turn. So that gives me four of the icons in total. Not quite the five I needed, but that allows me to place these two on here. Okay. Uh, I forgot the criminal, so I paid one stone too much. Did I? Okay, right, I believe you. Thank you. So there we go. So I've now got four in here. So one goes that way, one goes that way, and one goes up, and I gain two virtue. And then here, one goes that way, one goes that way, and one goes up, and I can hire or I can destroy a card. So I'm going to destroy. Where can I destroy from? Destroy one card from either your hand or your draw pile. Oh, so I can actually destroy the top card of my draw pile if I wanted to. If you have no draw pile, you can shuffle your discards to destroy from. This is always optional. I'm going to look at this because I would have known what this, uh, what this was. Okay, because it's the last card in my deck. So I'm going to look at it, and it is the laborer, and I am going to destroy it. Okay, so that's the... Uh, that's the ability for that. Now, is the, is the three in an area of the same color? No. Is the more than three in any area? No. So that's the end of that. Then I draw up. I don't have any cards, so I shuffle my hand. You're never supposed to have more than... Oh, you just notice what space... Yeah, okay. Okay, and then we draw three cards. There you go. So my hand is now the journeyman, the lender, and Rudolph. And it is now the AI's go. So that goes there. Please slide down. We have this card. It's another criminal. So that's another one corruption. Then it gets a debt. Then it moves four. One, two, three, four. And then it tries to do its favorite action, which it can do. Okay? Got one build icon, one criminal, and one stone. So it builds this one. It builds it on the leftmost space, which is there, which gets it a deed. Done. I think that's right this time. Move black marker to the right for having criminal when shuffling. Move black marker to the right for having criminal when shuffling. What have I missed? What have I missed? Oh, that's here. Yeah, that's here on the player raid. So when you shuffle your deck, if you've got a criminal, I gain a corruption. Right, okay. Which means on my turn, something should have happened. Yeah. So something should have happened on my turn before I drew up. Oh no, it was at the end, wasn't it? So something's going to happen now. Silver for the destroyed card. Okay, thank you, yes. I forgot that. Right, so. My turn. 
So now that these markers have met, something is going to happen at this point in my turn. So if I can get some more virtue now, then that would be great. So Squire drops off, everything slides to the right. What are we going to play? Do we play Rudolph? We could play Rudolph. We could really get so many things in the castle here. Because with Rudolph, I could take two gold. Then that would allow me to add two more things into the castle. I think I might. I think I might. The clash is resolved after the actions. Yes. So, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, oh, no, no, because Rudolph is a dropping off ability. Hmm. I probably want to play the lender because when the lender then resolves, I can flip over the, that debt card. Yeah, okay, we're going to play the lender. So that goes there. Uh, I then move one. Oh. Oh, hello. <laughs> I've got three trade icons plus that, which is actually four. Yeah, okay, I'm going to pay a silver, I think. Can I, can I get a virtue? Any way that I can get any virtue this turn? Not sure there is. Okay, so I'm moving, moving one. But I'm going to pay silver to move an extra one. Okay. Put somebody in the castle to get a virtue. Oh, actually, yes, you're right. Thank you. Just spotted that. So I'm only going to move to there, and I'm not going to do the trade action. I'm going to do the noble action. Because I've got the criminal, which counts as a noble, so that's one person. So it's a weak action, but the knock-on effect of this is actually going to be quite good, I think. So that's going to go in there. So then what happens is that one moves to there, that one moves to there, that one moves up, and I get a stone and an inkwell. So I've now got four inkwells and a stone. Okay. But then, because there's three in there, one moves up, I get two virtue. One goes to there and one goes to there. Is that it? Yep, that is it. And now there's four in here, so that gets bumped off and my opponent gets a stone. Okay, is that what you were thinking? I think so. Okay, so now we get to... I'd replenish my hand size. Wow, my, I don't have many cards, do I? Oh, I could have dismissed that to get the extra... No, that wouldn't have helped. No, because that would have given me two. Oh, no, it's not draw up. It's, it's recruit. Do I want to recruit? Yes, let's recruit the gatekeeper. I'm going to pay one to recruit the gatekeeper. So this is going to go into my discard pile. And it has a recruit ability that I can rearrange my board. So I'm going to rearrange... And I am going to put the lender at the end and the thief at the start. Okay. So that's for recruiting the gatekeeper, which cost me one. Right. Then we resolve the clash. So basically I get the stuff at the top and my opponent gets the stuff at the bottom. So the stuff at the top for me is two deeds. Indeed. There you go. And then my opponent, if my opponent has a criminal, oh, and I get a coin as well. If my opponent has a criminal, which they do, they gain a corruption. So that moves to there. And then these markers reset. I think that's right. Oliver's got to go. Thank you, Oliver, for joining in. Right. Okay. So... Yeah, that was my go done. Then I draw back up to my hand size. There you go. There's the swindler. That's the criminal, which means I'm going to get loads of corruption, but I'm going to get loads of stuff. And the game ends, or the end of the game trigger, is when one of these piles becomes empty. So, my opponent. That goes there. 
these slide down. I've not built any building, so I don't have any special abilities. Uh, do nothing. This is removed, and it doesn't get anything. I don't think it gets anything, or does it get anything? I can't remember. Yes, they gain the immediate effect on the top right of the card, which is that, and that means they gain a virtue. Okay, so that's gone. Then they move four, so one, two, three, four. And then they build. Now, can they build? They can build. No, they can't build. They've got two builder icons, one criminal, so that's three. One stone is four, but all the cheap buildings have gone. They can't build, so instead they flip a card over and gain a resource. And they flip a card over of the one that they've got the most of. If they are tied, they will flip a debt which also gets a resource, so that's basically two more stones. So, done. My go, I think. Did I get corruption? Uh, what have I missed? Flip a debt. Did I forget to take my corruption? when I played the thief. I think I did. Maybe I didn't. Okay, so we're talking about this clash. Yes, you're right. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of things here that I haven't actually done, that I forgot to do when they get revealed. Okay, so there was one here, which I didn't do. Uh, which has got a lightning bolt on, so presumably when I built this, just have a look at the player board. There's an icon here that I don't think I did. Um, and there's another icon here that I'm not sure I did. Or is that when they get a card? Yeah. Okay, I've forgotten what these things do. So apologies for this. I'm a little rusty on this. And it's different. This side of the board is different. So... Right, so those two icons mean... The chat's probably telling me, I'm just gonna look. Shuffle your discard piles back into your draw pile. Should it have been doing that at the end of every turn? Or is that just when it does it, it gets that? It would have been immediate added a black card to his discard pile. Right, so yeah, I forgot to do that. So we'll do that here. I don't know where that bit is in the rule book. But yeah, I definitely missed it. So this here, you're saying that's when he shuffles. So when my opponent shuffles, he's going to gain a virtue and gain a corruption. Seems a bit odd, but what's this one? All these icons serve the same purpose for the AI. They simply add a card from the top of the future schemes, draw a pile to the top of their deck. So, yeah, I'm not sure what these two icons here are. This one in particular. Well, I know what that one does. But I don't know what that one does. Yeah, I'm a bit confused by by these buildings here. Right, Robert's here from Hungary. Hi Robert, thank you for joining in. And Roberto is saying they reshuffle when they have no more cards to draw and they get a virtue and a corruption. Got that. Um, so this is a free dismissal when he recruits. Right, so this is a bonus that they get whenever they do this action. But this is not the order of the actions like it is on a normal player board. Right, okay. I think, I think we've got it now. I think we've got it. Uh, and we're resolving their clash, aren't we? Yeah, so we're resolving their clash. They get a resource, which is a stone. 
It's just their order of actions is not printed on the board anywhere. <laughs> so they get a stone and they get a deed. And then I get, because I've got a criminal, I get a corruption. Right, we're all good. The clash has been resolved. It is back to my go. Thank you very much for bearing with me with that. Right. And I've now learned how this part of the game works. So, my go. Uh, the lender drops off. And I can flip over a debt. So I'm going to flip over a debt. And I'm going to take a resource. And I'm going to take a... Um, I think I'm going to take a gold. Yep, there we go. These slide down. And then I'm going to play Rudolph. Rudolph is going to get played there. And uh, I didn't play a criminal, so I don't get any more corruption. I then move two spaces. I move one, two to here. Um, I don't want to dismiss that because it doesn't have any matching icons for the action that I want to do, which is the noble action. I have one, two, three, which allows me to place two nobles <clears throat> in here. I'm going with a fairly focused strategy. Uh, one moves that way, one moves that way, one moves up. I get either a gold or I can move one of my workers from the first tier section of the castle to an adjacent first tier. So, yeah, I might move that one. Okay, I then resolve this area. So that moves to there, that moves to there. That moves up and I can flip over one of my deeds and then this area resolves that one moves to there that one moves to there that one moves up I can destroy a card or hire a card yeah uh, right do I want to hire a card which one of these cards do I want to hire I don't know. The illusionist looks cool. He is a criminal, but he looks like, uh, he looks very cool. Um, not sure, do I just want to destroy a card? I mean, I could just destroy the journeyman. Hmm. Yeah, now let's hire somebody. Let's hire somebody for free. Let's hire the woodcutter, right? So I hire the woodcutter for free um, and I gain a virtue and that card goes into my discard pile. Mark was saying the courier. When was the courier? Oh yeah. Yeah, looking at it now. Never mind. we've hired the woodcutter. That is it for the castle movement. The castle is, as you can see, full. Well, not quite full, but it's got lots of people in it. So, there we go. That is that. Um, right, I think my go is done. I'm going to draw up. So, I'm going to gain a corruption because I'm drawing, I'm shuffling my deck and I have a criminal on my board. Right, okay. We might be playing another criminal in a minute. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing all right here. I'm getting loads of points from here. I'm not getting many points from anywhere else. Um, but of course, the end of the game is these cards. So that's going to go there. These are going to slide down. This is the last card. And we have uh, dismissing this one. So that gets dismissed. And it gets the ability on the top right, which is rearranged, but whenever it rearranges, it just gets a resource. It gets another stone. The next one is three movement. So one, two, three. And then the next one is uh, the manuscript action. Does it have three ink wells? Uh, or three? No, it doesn't. <clears throat> it's got two. It's got one cross, one criminal. But it doesn't have an ink well, so it can't buy the manuscript. Okay, which means it will go to that, which is flip a card over and gain a resource. So it's flipped over a deed 
and it gains uh, a stone. So it's now got six. Now got six stone. Okay, right. That's it. Go done. My go. This slides off. There's no ability on that one. These slide down. Now, am I going to play another criminal and do this thing with the castle again? It means I've got so many things in the castle, but it might just work. So yeah, we're going to play the swindler. Uh, because I've played a criminal, I gain two corruption because I've got two criminals on my board. So I gain two corruption. Um, then I have to move three spaces. So I'll go clippity clop, clippity clop, clippity clop to there. Three. Then I'm going to choose the noble action. I've got criminal, criminal, noble, which is two more. Yep, fairly focused strategy here. That one there, that one there, and then that one moves there, that one moves there, that one goes up, I get a stone and an inkwell. I'm saving up these inkwells, I am going to spend them at some point. Um, but yeah, that's, that's alright, I think that's good. If you get enough workers in the castle, each layer is worth more points at the end. Yes, I mean this is three points for everything in the middle, two points for everything here. So yeah, I'm getting a huge amount of points here. Right, it's over to my opponent. My opponent has no cards to draw. So at this point, I believe we do the shuffling thing. Um, wherever that is. At the start of the AI's turn, shift all cards on their player board one space to the right, and then turn over the top card from their pile. After doing so, carry the effects. Yeah, where is it? Where does it say? It must say somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where it says, but I'm going to do it. So this, this one slides off first, they slide down, and then we're going to reshuffle this, okay? Um, yeah, slide off first. And then because we're reshuffling, it gains a virtue and it gains a corruption. Yeah, castle strategy is stronger when opponent is also doing castle, is it? Oh, because you can knock them off, I guess. Yeah. Right, so the card this turn is one of the brown ones again. So dismisses this one and gets the immediate benefit, which is that, which is that, which is that, which is not a stone because he's already got six stone, so he gets gold. There you go. Uh, then move two. One, two. Uh, and then does its preferred... No, sorry, does the noble action. It can't do the noble action. It's only got one thirdly and one gold, so it can't do that. So instead, it flips a deed and gains a virtue. Right. I think that's right. Oh, they kick out your workers and you can use them again. Yes. Also gets the virtue for no criminal reshuffle. Does it do that? Does it do that as well? Yeah, I don't, uh, I'm assuming it does. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give it the virtue for that. I don't, I don't know where that is in the rules. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. When the AI's draw pile runs out, they will have likely dropped off one card from their player board, leaving only two on their player board. This is intended. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we're going to assume it does get the same, uh, the same bonus as me when it reshuffles. It doesn't say anywhere in the rules unless it, unless it does and I've missed it, but that's what we're going to play with. Right, my go. Uh, the thief drops off. He's done his job. When he drops off, I gain uh, a, um, a debt and a money. Yep. Okay, and then these slide down. Right, so. My virtue is a little bit of a, an issue, so I think I'm going to play... Why do I not have three cards in hand? I should have three cards in hand. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> should we just play the squire and do it again? I think I might play the squire and do it again. Yeah. Let's play the squire and we'll just do it again. We'll just stick with this as a strategy. 
Um, so I move two spaces. One, two. Do I want to pay to move any more? No, I don't think I do, because I've got three nobles here. I've got two nobles and a criminal, which is three, which is two more workers. I'm running out of workers. Um, so they go in, they both go in there. But then that moves to there, that moves to there, that goes up. I get either a gold or I can move some things around. So I'm going to move this one. Um, To here, which means this now triggers. So that one moves to there, that one moves to there, that one moves to there. I can flip a card over, I will flip over a debt, and I will get this time I'm going to get an inkwell. Okay, and now there's three in here, which means one moves up. I don't think they move to the sides on layer two. So that moves up to the top. I am the king of the castle, so I get my. I got to the top space in the castle, first card, five points at the end of the game, and my hand size has gone up, and I also get a resource. So I'm going to take another ink well. There we go. I think... I think that is right. Do I want to recruit? Do I want to recruit the meddler? Um, it does draw cards. It does give me a corruption. It does get me a lot of debt. How can I pay off that debt? Hmm. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to do this because I've got so much money. So I'm going to pay two coins and I am going to hire the meddler. What that means is that corruption marker moves to the right, and that card goes to my discard pile. Okay? So that's the high ring. Then we resolve my clash. So I gain three coins and two debt. Fine, not worried about it. I'll pay it off. Okay, and my opponents, if they have no criminals, gain a virtue. Okay, those go there. How many of these are left? Right, deeds, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are eight deeds left. So only four have been taken during the game. And debts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Only five of those have been taken. So yeah, we're not, in terms of <laughs> me doing this, I'm almost finished. But in terms of the actual end game condition, we're about a third of the way through. Um, okay, right. So that's that done, that's that done. My go, I draw a card, my opponent's turn. That goes there, that goes there, that goes there. We have this, which is a criminal, so it gains a corruption. Uh, no other criminal tokens on the board, nope. Um, it then gains a debt. Oh, there you go, there's another one. Oh, don't flip it over, Paul. The right way up. Then it moves four. One, two, three, four. Uh, then it tries to do its favoured action of building. Now it's got one plus six stone, so it builds one of the big ones. And this goes, it can't go there, so it goes here. It destroys a card, but when it destroys a card, it flips a card, uh, which is that. It gains a resource, which is stone, and it's made the link, so it also gets an inkwell. There you go. I think that's right. Uh, yeah, right, my go. So the Rudol Rudolph slides off and I either destroy two cards or get two resources. I'm going to take two inkwells. Everything slides down. Because that's what I'm going to go with now. I'm going to go with spending my inkwells, I think. Um, because these are all worth points at the end of the game. Yeah, and I think that's what we've drawn as well. Um, hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's how far do I want to move? I think... Yeah, I think I'm just going to play the lender. So I'm going to play the lender. I'm going to move one to here. I don't... Do I want to pay him to move extra? 
No, I think I think I'm okay with that. And I'm going to choose the uh, the manuscript action. I need three manuscripts or three of those points. I've got one criminal. So I use two ink wells, and I take this. And the immediate benefit of this is I gain a deed. Okay, so I did that. I can hire. I want to hire. Uh, I don't think I want to hire that one. No, I'm not really bothered about that one. So I'm not going to hire. Resolve the clash. Draw back up to three cards. Okay, my go is done. My opponent's turn. Oh, we've got our first grey card come out. So this is the first card that's gone in from the future schemes. Let's move the rule book out of the way. That looks a bit tidier. So not going to do anything. Gains a resource, which is going to be stone. Uh, then it dismisses this one, and it gets the rearrange ability, which is another stone. Then it moves three. One, two, three. Then it builds. Can it build? Can it build? It can build a five. One build icon, one criminal, three stone, so it builds. Oh, it's also got that. Does that give it a permanent hammer icon? I think it does, so it only needs, only needs two stone. It's building this. And this means when we do a clash, if it's got no criminals, it can do something. Yeah. Where are these all explained? I'm sure they must be in the rulebook somewhere, but I just couldn't find them. So that goes on there, which is that icon, which is that, which is that. Yeah, have I got that right? Done. It built. My go. The swindler drops off and I get two gold. These move down. Right, I've got no criminals on my board now. Uh, we can do the whole moving up again to the middle, I think. Um, with the gatekeeper. Yeah, gatekeeper's pretty good. So yeah, I'm going to play the gatekeeper. Uh, when it comes into play, I'm going to use its ability to rearrange. I'm going to do that. Uh, we're then going to move one to here. This is fine. Yeah, that's that's all fine, I think. Unless I want to move. How many am I going to be putting on? I'm going to be putting two on. Um, okay, I'll pay a silver. Move an extra one to here. Then I'm going to choose the placing nobles action. I have one, two, and with the gold is three. Gets me to place two nobles on the board. One's going to go there, and the other one's going to go there. That immediately splits, so one goes there, one goes there, and one goes up. And I get a stone and an inkwell. Then this splits. That one goes up, I get two virtue. That one goes to there, goes to there. And then this moves up, and this moves up, and I get two more resources, and I'm going to take two more inkwells. Okay, there we go. Wow. Oh, my hand size should be four. I forgot about that. Um, I then have to draw back up to my hand size. Do I want to recruit the miner? Uh, sure. Yeah, let's recruit the miner. I pay two, two coins, I recruit the miner, and I gain a virtue. There you go. Uh, it isn't in the rules. Oh, right. Okay, so that's why, <laughs> that's why I couldn't find it in the rules. That's a little bit odd, isn't it? How did, how did people work it out then? Or is, is it you just look at the icons and that's what it does? It would have been nice if it was in the rules. But thank you for confirming that. And I'm getting virtue from the reshuffle because I don't have any criminals. Thank you. Right, okay, so I'm drawing two cards to put my hand size up to four. There we go. I think this is going well. I think. Because this, this castle here looks <laughs> overrun with blue forces. Um, 
That's my good My opponents. And I'm very much enjoying it, which is important. Okay, do nothing. Get a stone. Uh, move one. Of course, I wouldn't be doing so well without the help of the chat, so thank you very much for the rules help along the way. Uh, we're building again. One, two, three, four, five. So it can build another one of these. Okay, and that's going here, which gets it a resource, which is a stone. And a link, and it gets a deed card. Okay, done. My go. The lender drops off. I will flip over one of my debts, and I will get a resource, and the resource that I will get is an inkwell. I should probably actually get some stone. I should probably build something because they are worth points. So I'll take a stone at this point. Uh, these slide down. And then what are we going to play? Indeed, what are we going to play? Um, I've only got one noble left in the ca for, for moving things around in the castle. So actually, I'm not going to be able to get much stuff up the top anymore. So maybe it is time to get some manuscripts. Um, where can we go to get a manuscript? Now you want you want manuscripts of the same colour because that gets you uh, extra bonuses at the end of the game. I believe. Um, yeah. Okay. So we're moving. Who? Which one of these am I going to play? Okay, I'm going to play the Miner. So when the Miner comes into play, I gain a Virtue. And then I'm moving two. Where do we want to go? Okay, so I'm going to go one, two. Okay, I'm then going to build. I've got one hammer icon from the miner. I'm going to use two stone. So that gives me, I can build this. You have to build these from left to right, or can you build any of them? Reduce virtue. I took the reshuffle bonus twice. Did I? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, can you, can you build any of your buildings? Place the last worker two spaces from where you were. Which worker? The last worker is worth five points for you, save him for a late action. Ah! Uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm not able to keep up with the chat. The, the delay on the chat is a little bit confusing at times. So any order on the buildings, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Uh, which one of these do I want to build? I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, I'll I'll build the one that increases my hand size. Why not? Okay, and this is going to go on here, which gets me an inkwell, but it also means I get the link bonus here. So my opponent for the link bonus gets the virtue. Oh, did I did I forget to do the clash? I just went against the arrow on the last move. Oh, I did. I did. Sorry. Okay, forget that. Put that back. <laughs> it's cheating so much here. I put the two stone back. I spend the two stone. I can't do that. Did I did I forget to do the clash on my uh, on my opponent's turn? I think I might have done. Pay a silver to move like I did? Oh, and in fact, I could have just gone there and there. So I, I, I can still get there. I just, yeah, rather than going there and there, I can go there and there. Okay, so I can still do it, I can still build, and I can still put that there. I've taken the ink well. My opponent flips a card over. And I get to move something in the castle. This is this is what I'm doing. 
Yeah, so I think that's okay. Right. I, I'm just not sure I resolved this clash. I think I forgot to resolve this clash on the AIs last turn. But I now get to move something in the castle. I think this is, this is what you're saying. If I out the last worker from the top left section, the cascade will send two more to the castle. Yes, right, okay. Um, which, is, which is what I was looking at doing. So with this one movement, I'm going to move that to there. Okay, and then that triggers this. That moves up. That moves that way. That moves that way. I get <clears throat> a gold or move a worker. And I'm going to move this worker to here. Then this triggers and that moves up and I get a resource. And I'm going to take um, I'll take a stone. Okay. And then this triggers that moves up, that goes to there, that goes to there. I can flip a card over. I'll flip a debt over and I'll get another stone. And then this triggers that goes up to there uh, and I get another resource, and I'll take another stone. Okay, right. <sighs> Is that right? <laughs> and that was all from building. That was all from building a building there, triggered one worker movement, that suddenly triggered all of that. Uh, first levels trigger first. Okay, right. So yeah, I think we're good, but I, I think I did forget to do this. Nobody said anything, but I think I forgot to do this on my opponent's last turn, which means my opponent should have got stone, a deed. I didn't get any corruption, and then those would have split up. Let, let me know if I did or didn't do that. Um, wow. Yeah, that was a lot happening. And this castle, I'm just going to show you the zoomed in bit. No, wrong one. There you go. Look at this castle. That is full. Yeah, that's really good. Okay. So now it's my opponent's turn. Yeah. Remembering to resolve the clashes is a tricky thing. So, we're going to gain a corruption. No other criminal icons on the board. Nope, don't think so. Oh, and there's all this as well. So whenever it flips a card over, it should have dismissed this. And it would have got that, which would have been a virtue. Right, okay, I need to remember these things. Whenever it does this, it gets this. Whenever it does this, it gets this. Okay, we've done that, so it's doing this. Uh, that is adding a new, a new scheme to the discard pile, and it also dismisses this one, which is another X, and an X is uh, flip a card over. No, it's not. No. No, the X is this, which is a virtue. Then it's moving one. Then it is doing its favoured action. Well, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six. It's got six stone. It can't do its favoured action. One, two, three, seven. It's got that. It has a hammer, so it, it can do its favoured action. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it builds this, and it's building it there, which gets a virtue. Okay. Done. I'm just checking these icons. Did it do that? No, it did. No, I think we're all good. Right, okay. Uh, the uncovered bonus from the seven building, does that mean to dismiss twice? Yeah. Um, where? Seven building? I think it means whenever it does that, it dismisses, and whenever it does that, it dismisses. I think that's what that means. Right. My go. The squire drops off. I'm missing a card in my hand. Right, what am I going to play? Am I going to play the meddler to try and bring the end of the game closer? I think I am. 
because I think I'm doing all right. Although, <laughs> it's getting loads of points from buildings, which I do not have. Um, so yeah, we're going to play the meddler. We play the meddler, I gain a corruption. There's no immediate effect. I then have to move two. Don't cheat this time, Paul. Follow the arrows. So I go one, two. Uh, I will pay a silver to move further. Um, I need to flip a, flip a debt. Why do I need to flip a debt? Don't know why I need to flip a debt. I've missed something. All of my debts are already flipped. So five card hand. No, I think I've just got a. Oh yeah, I've got a five card hand now. Yeah, wow, five card hand. <laughs> Thank you, because I've unlocked that. Uh, I could have got there without spending the silver. How could I have got there? Where did I start? I started here. Oh yeah, there's an arrow down. Yeah, one, two. Thank you. These pesky arrows. Right, do I want to dismiss that character? Yes, I do. I want to dismiss that character. Um, because it's got the cross icon on it, which I'm going to use. And when I dismiss it, I get to shuffle my cards into my deck. And whenever I do that, if I have a criminal, I gain a corruption. Okay, I'm starting to remember it. Or get used to it. It's, the, it's those little fiddly bits. As you say, it's that bit on the bottom of the player ID. It is there, but I think it's quite easy to forget. Okay. So I dismiss that. So I've got one cross icon from there, one from the criminal, and one inkwell. Allows me to take this. And the immediate bonus of that is I get to hire a character for free. And if I hire the one which gives me a virtue, then we're all good. Uh, right. So now do I want to hire this one? Uh, That'll allow me to discard a card. I don't think I do. Not really sure. So, no, I'm not going to hire. Um, we resolve my clash. So I get a money and two deed cards. So just to give you an idea, there are three deed cards left. I need to be flipping them over. Uh, and my opponent, if they have a criminal, they gain a corruption, which they do. Right, okay, we're good. My go is done. Let's see what my opponent does. Okay, so first action is to flip a card over, so we're going to flip that one. Second is to move two spaces, one, two. Uh, third is to manuscript. So we have uh, a cross, an inkwell, and a criminal. So that's three, and they are in a space with three. So they do get this. So they get that, and they gain a virtue. Um, yeah. Okay, and the immediate bonus is a virtue. So that moves. Or did I just give them the virtue? I just gave them the virtue. Yeah. So we've done that, and now they they resolve their clash. Okay, so when they resolve their clash, they get a resource, which will be stone. And they get a deed. Oh, we're getting close to the end. And I get, if I've got a criminal, which I have, I get a corruption. Um, do not forget the fifth icon on the AI. Yes, I was just about to look that up to see what that is. It's if they've got no criminals, they can flip a debt over, I think. But they do have criminals. In fact, where is that icon? 
<laughs> if you're saying those are not explained in the rule book, then yeah, but I think that's what it means. I think it means if they have no criminals, they can flip over a debt card. Oh, from my own clash, I need to flip a debt or deed of possible, otherwise gain one virtue. Do I? From my own clash, which was here, I need to flip a debt or deed or gain a virtue. Why, why do I need to do that? What have I missed? I'm not sure why I need to do that. Yeah. Okay, right, cool. <laughs> um, where we were up to? I've lost what we were doing. We were doing something with my My opponent took this. Yes, that's right. My go. Uh, the gatekeeper slides off. I should have five cards in hand. And what am I going to play this turn? I need to be doing something with these resources before the game ends. Um, yeah, so I think we might just... Have I got anything that gives me more ink wells? I don't. Okay, I might play the woodcutter. Yeah, I'm playing the woodcutter. So the woodcutter is coming into play. So whenever I build, I gain a virtue. Okay, I'm moving two. I'm looking at the arrows this time. So I go one, two. Uh, I then build. Now I've got one. Ha I've got two hammers. And I've got five stone. I can build one of my seven pointers. Okay, so I'm going to build the seven pointer that gives me the cross. It's going to go here, which gives me an inkwell. No, I'm going to go. No, I can't cross the river. Yeah, I'm going there that gives me an inkwell. So I spent all of that. That's all of the stone gone. And whenever I build, I gain a virtue. Oh, I have a wild. Thank you. I have a wild. I've got add a criminal. So I've actually got three builder icons. So I've saved one stone. There we go. We're good. Draw a card. My opponent. Slidey slide. Okay, so nothing there. Gains a deed. One left in the pile. Moves four. One, two, three, four. Uh, does the noble action. Has got one, two, three. Just. So places two workers in the castle here. That triggers that, explodes that area, moves up to there, and gets one of these flipped over. Okay. Done. Resolve the clash. Almost forgot. Uh, that could have been possibly been there from last turn. <laughs> Gain a stone. Gain another deed. That's the end of the game triggered. Well, that's crept up on me a bit too quick. Uh, if I've got a criminal, I gain a corruption, which I do. And this, which doesn't apply. So I think we're good. Lender, start flipping cards now. It's too late. <laughs> it is too late. Um... So, end of the game, in the solo game. The game ends in the same way, keeping in mind that the AI will always take the final turn. So you finish, do you finish the round and then play one more round? You should always play one more round. That's not the rule, it should be the rule. In my opinion. Yeah, current round is finished, then one final round takes place. Right, so, I'm going to have my final turn of the game. That's going to move there, that's going to go there. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I have so many inkwells. So many inkwells. Not going to be able to get three of each inkwell, am I? Uh, what can I do to start flipping deeds over? I mean, each deed is flipped over with two points. Uh, Money's not worth anything. 
to the end, is it? Or is it? Maybe it is. Start trade flipping. What do you mean by trade flipping? Oh, you mean this? Right, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, that works. So we're going to play the lender. We're going to move one to there. And then we're going to flip over. So it's four to flip a card. I've got one, two. Should have unlocked that one instead, shouldn't I? Uh, that one. Yeah, never mind. The one, two, three, four. That's one card flipped. Another four for another card flipped. And I'm just short for another one. So that's two cards. Two cards flipped. One, two. Oh, and dismiss. Well spotted. Well spotted. If I spend one coin to dismiss that, and then another one coin for another bag, that's another four bags. That is another card. Yeah, this whole dismissing characters is a really clever part of the game. But one that I keep forgetting. I get the dismiss bonus as well, but the dismiss bonus is just to discard a card, which doesn't actually do anything for me. Right. I'm done. My opponent now takes the last turn of the game, and then we go to add up the points. Okay, so gain a virtue, move three, and then do that action. Can't do that action, because there's only got two, no, it's got three. So it does put two nobles in the castle here. Uh, that then explodes, one of them goes up to there, one goes to there, one goes to there. Moving up to there is a gold or moving a worker. I don't think this matters. I don't think it matters at all. Does it say in the rulebook which one of those it chooses? I don't think it's going to make any difference. Right, that, I believe, is the end of the game. Whew. Right, it was a bit fiddly, uh, but, you know, if I played it again now, there's a lot of those bits that I would play a lot smoother. Always a left. I get one silver back. The dismiss was better. Okay. Why do I get one silver back? Oh, because I had a criminal. Okay. Yep. Always forgetting criminal icons are wild. Always forgetting that. Right. Okay. So let's do some scoring. I kind of don't care who wins because that was really good. Uh, I would definitely play this solo mode again. It was quite involved, but yeah, really, really good. So scoring. We don't have a score pad. Ah, doesn't come with a score pad. That's a shame. So I don't even know if I've got a pen. No, I had a tidy up of the office yesterday and I moved all of the pens that were lying around on the floor. Right, we'll find a way of scoring. I will use random other components. So, constructed buildings. Yeah, I've not scored very many from constructed buildings. I've built one of those, which is six, and one of those, which is two. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use uh, money for points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and I'm just going to put it, I'm going to put it here. This is my points. Okay. And my opponent got 13, 28, uh, 28, 37. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and three of them. Okay, so 30, workers are 10. 37. Right, that's it. That's points for building. Workers in the castle. Hey, hey, here we go. Right, so 3, 2, and 1. So I've got 15. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 20, so that's 35. 36, 37, 38, 39. So if I put one money back and call it 40, there you go. My opponent has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll put two coins back, add another 10. Right, current scores, 47, 45. Doing all right for now. Use the app. Yeah, I don't have, <laughs> I don't have that handy. 
Transcribed manuscripts, VPs for sets of ribbon colours from specific manuscripts. Yeah, neither of us did that at all. Um, so I've got one blue and one black, which is basically two points. My opponent has one white, which is one point. Castle leader card. Yep, yeah, I got five. So I'll put one, two, three, four, five back and get another one. Um, cleric bonus cards. Nobody got any cleric bonus cards. Unpaid debts. Nobody's got any unpaid debts. Acquired deeds and approved deeds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, sixteen. Uh, so I'll put four back and gain another two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fourteen, seventeen, twenty. Okay, poverty cards. So if revealed, um, the players with the most, second most, and third most flip. Oh no, that's not the poverty card. It's this. It's the prosperity card. So we're looking at flipped debts. They've got three. I've got four. Um, in games with less than three players, the middle VP is ignored. So basically, I get twelve, and my opponent gets four. Four points for them and 12 points for me. I think that's it. Is that it? Who plays his first and third? Yeah, so 12 and 4. I think, I think that is it. Okay, let's add up the scores. So 40, 50, 60, 70, 82. I think that's 82. 82 versus 70. Yeah. Okay, so I won. Thank you to the help from the chat. Um, yeah, if that's right, I'm still owed for two manuscripts. Am I? As for resources, what have I missed? Constructed buildings, workers in the castle, transcribed manuscripts. I did that. Castle leader, the player with the highest. In the case of a tie, the tied player with the most remaining silver and resources is the winner. Oh, the AI gains points for leftover resources. Oh, okay, right. Cheaty AI. <laughs> the AI scores points in the exact same way. However, oh, oh yeah, it's this. It gains one point per leftover resource. It's got four of them. So, none. So there we go. That is the score. People are saying no. I did the manuscripts wrong. What did I do with the manuscripts? And I missed the castle leader. Did I miss the castle leader? Okay. Oh, it's one point per resource. That's not a seven, it's a flag. Okay, so four points. One, two, three, four. So it's 74. I did score the castle leader. I thought I did. So 82 versus 74. I think that's right. Mark is saying plus two manuscripts. I, th I thought I did. I'm pretty sure I did the points for the manuscripts because I've got one blue and one black. And that's worth one point each. Yeah, I, I think I did that. Oh, two different manuscripts. Ah, you're collecting different ones. Not ones of the same. Thank you. Yes, so I'm owed another two. There you go. Thank you, James, for insisting. Yes, so 84 versus 74. I still won. Whichever way we do it, I've still won. But no, I do want to get it right. So yeah, your end game points is for, it does say not equals to. There is a not equals to there different colors of manuscripts. The reason you want the same color is for the cleric bonus cards, which, which nobody got. Uh, yeah, that's for having three of the same color of manuscript. But at the end of the game, you want different colored ones. Yeah, really good. I don't, well, first of all, I wouldn't have played correctly without the chat. I would have missed a couple of things. I would have definitely missed that. Although to be honest, uh, because I know I have the chat here, I kind of go into these playthroughs um, not, you know, this. I haven't spent all morning practicing this game is what I'm saying. So I kind of rely on the chat to correct me. Um, but also the chat helps me out with a couple of suggestions as well. So thank you very much for that. I like this game. I've only played Architects of the West Kingdom once. I've only played Paladins of the West Kingdom once. And I'd only played Viscounts of the West Kingdom once multiplayer. So take this with a pinch of salt. But this is my favorite one of the three, bearing in mind I've only played each one of them once. The solo mode for this is really good. Um, 
As some of you know, I'm not a big fan of complex AIs where you've really got to think about what to do and there's a whole series of steps that you need to follow to work out what it will do. In this game, it's okay because it's very, very clear. If we look at this player board, if we look at this here, this basically says whenever it gets this, it does this instead. Or whenever it does this, it does this instead. This was really good. This is a really good player aid. Um, so yeah, I found, I found the AI in this game to be okay. It was manageable for me. It didn't, it didn't make my brain explode and fall, over, fall all over the floor. So the Builder one is apparently the easiest one. When I play this again solo, because I am very tempted to play this again solo. I don't know when I will, um, but I would like to. I would like to play it with uh, against one of the other AIs. So maybe I'll fit another one of these in next month. Um, but that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, before you go, just a couple of things. Obviously, click like on the video. Uh, thank you very much for, for, for doing that. And thank you very much for being with me now. If you are not watching this live, if you are watching this afterwards, obviously, thank you for watching. Please click like and please just leave a comment in the video. That really helps the algorithms. One of the, one of the reasons my videos are not doing well at the moment is the YouTube algorithm is just not suggesting them that much. So yeah, comments in the video really, really do help. Um, and regular viewers will know this, but for those people watching this, uh, I've basically taken January off work, so I'm not doing any commissioned videos in January. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm not doing any videos because obviously I'm doing this one. I'm doing about 10 to 12 live videos a week. Uh, they're all purely funded through the Patreon campaign and my Patreon supporters do have input on what games I'm going to be playing. Uh, so yeah, so a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for making January possible, not just this video, but the whole month. Uh, and if you like the content that I make and you want to support the channel, then patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Uh, lots of different benefits for subscribers at different uh, tier levels. That's everything for now. It is 10 to 4. I am going to be packing this up now. Uh, then I'm going to be going live in about 15 minutes playing a computer game. Uh, I'm not sure which yet, but that will be coming live on the channel in about 15 minutes. Uh, and then tonight I will be doing a live two-player playthrough of Keeper, the game by Richard Breeze. So that's coming 8 o'clock GMT tonight. Yeah, so yeah, another live stream in, a, in about a quarter of an hour of me playing a computer game, followed by Keeper tonight. There you go, that's everything. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next time. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.